Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus SUV talk. Hey, welcome to 2022. Sorry if you're watching this video later on in the year or in 23 or 24 or whatever. This is my first video of the new year. I took some vacation time and I'm a little excited to get back on camera and I'm excited to talk about my favorite topic, trucks. <laughs> so in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about one of the big questions I've been getting asked on this channel quite a bit is the F-150 versus the Toyota Tundra. I've had a few issues with my new Tundra and people have been saying a little snarky in the comments, do you miss your Ford yet? And yeah, there are things I do miss about it. And I thought now is the time to talk about it. I've had this truck for about a month. And so let's go ahead and dive in. In this video, I'm gonna tell you my five things where the Tundra wins over the Ford and five things where, well, the Ford wins over the Tundra. Now, if you have any idea of this channel and know what we're doing here, we, between Jill, managing editor Jill Simonella and myself, we review hundreds of vehicles a year where I drive all sorts of trucks. And the reason the Ford came up was because last year I bought the 2021 F-150 Power Boost, the hybrid, as my long-term kind of owner review vehicle, which I really enjoy doing. I get more information out of owning it for months and months rather than having just for seven days, like these other week-long loans I have. And then this year, or actually last year, year before, I was all, all goes together. Um, I have a 2022 Toyota Tundra I just bought. Now let's talk about these two trucks. The 21 F-150 was, like I said, the hybrid, the power boost. It had the XLT, the 302A high package. Um, I did have the 7.2 kilowatt power on board in the back, and it was about $60,000. This 2022 Toyota Tundra is the limited. I have the same crew cab as the Ford, same bed length, same pano uh, moonroof, which is closed at the moment. It's really windy out here today. I'm trying to keep down the noise. Uh, and it's limited, and this is about $60,000. So even though Ford goes XL, XLT, then Lariat, and I got the XLT, and Toyota goes SR, SR5, and Limited, I feel like even though I'm off like one grade there, uh, the price is about the same. So both $60,000 trucks, which is frankly all I care about. Who care? I don't care about trim as much. So I have comparable trucks. Now let's get down to the brass tacks. Let's get down to where the Tundra wins. And I'm doing this video as I'm driving because I went for a quick drive because I want to sh share with you really where the Toyota wins. And this is going to be the powertrain. And the the I think the overall powertrain in this vehicle is better than Ford's. And what I want to say with that is that this on paper has the same kind of number for most people, right? 3.5 liter, 3.5 liter. They're both V6s. They're both twin turbos. They both have 10 speed automatic transmissions. So it seems like they're pretty similar, but I can tell you after driving this truck versus the Ford, and I've also driven the iForce Max, the hybrid version of the Toyota Tundra as well, so I can speak to both of those. Um, I think this truck has more power at a lower tor torque curve, and it just feels more powerful. And so it just feels more like get back your seat. Um, and there's also the fact that you may have heard that or may not hear that. I'm gonna try to get some video of that. I have the JBL Premium Auto System, and what that means is I spent the extra money. Okay, really what that means is I have fake engine noise. Boo, yes, boo, boo, fake engine noise, boo. Well, the reality of things is I like it. I did get an email over break. Somebody was trying to figure out how to turn it off and I don't think there's a way to turn it off, frankly. And I don't really bother me at all. I like the fact that even though I have a small displacement V6 and there's not much you can do for exhaust note with a small displacement V6, right? You don't have the big engine. You can't do a lot of exhaust note. I just like the fact that I have some piped in engine noise and it just makes it feel like it's more powerful. It, this truck on a dyno versus the F-150, it may be slower in torque. It may not have the same horsepower. It may not have all that kind of stuff. It may just be a whole, I may be talking on my head, right? I don't think I am. However, the exhaust note sound just makes it sound better. And that was my chief complaint with the Ford last year was I was basically driving an electric car and I'm sorry, electric car driving unless you're doing a Tesla model plaid or something, it's just freaking boring. So I like the power delivery better than this. I'm looking at my notes. Uh, the second thing I like much better than this versus the Ford is I like the ride quality in this better. Now this has got the five link coil suspension. It's got a fully box frame. It's similar to the Ford. Ford's got fully box frame as well, but they have leaf springs. And the difference is eh, very, very minuscule between the five link coil suspension and Ford's setup with the, with the leaf springs. Now, Ford F-250, which I reviewed before, was like riding a bunking, bucking Bronco 
And sometimes trucks are like that, but in this case, I think it's just that little bit difference. And I feel like this is just better for a ride quality uh, over um, bumps and things. And honestly, if you're shopping this versus a 21 Tundra, holy cow, the ride quality in this is so much better. Hitting the hitting bumps, going to railroad tracks, it's phenomenally better in this truck. So I like this truck's ride quality better than I did the Ford. And the other thing about the Ford that I talked about in my other videos last year, which I have a whole playlist, I did 30 freaking videos in that truck, trust me. Grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, tons of videos. Um, to me, that drove more like a sedan. And this one sounds better, it feels better, it's smooth, it's more powerful. This one rides more like, to me, a, a more powerful truck. Uh, a little bit more, I don't wanna say TRX or Raptor-ish, but just better. I just like the ride quality better. Let me just cut the chase and put it like that. Number three thing I like about this, I like all the engineering. All right, so I've owned a 13 Tundra. I've done every model year of Tundra since 13. I've driven Fords, I've driven Rams, I've owned Chevys, I've driven all this kind of stuff. And I just think overall, Toyota's engineering on this truck is just better. This feels like a very solid truck. It feels like I can drive through a brick wall and keep going. I mean, I just have a lot of good feeling about the overall engineering of this truck. I feel like it's really solid. And as I've been driving it, I did have the one issue with the door lock, which they fixed right away, but I don't have any other issues. You know, if you remember in that Ford, in wind like this today, I'd have the, the weather ship would be going crazy. I'd have the, the uh, sounds from the A pillars. It would have some rattles in the A pillars. It would drive me nuts. And so, you know, I just feel like this truck is gonna be more solid than the Ford is for engineering wise and the other thing is build quality too goes to that so three and four kind of together build quality on this i think is, is much better i don't have any concerns about things moving out of place or things kind of being weird like i remember i was just grabbing the center console here i grabbed a ram one time and i could move the entire center console like three inches back and forth this truck the door is closed solid it feels really solid inside the cabin i don't have any concerns about that at all so to kind of recap here on those five things i have well, at number, actually, say number five. Let me get number five. The most important thing, as you saw in the undercarriage video, I have no rust. Holy cow, what a concept. And I gotta tell you what, there are people that, that think rust is no big deal in trucks, and people that, owners that tell me that they will never buy a truck that's got rust. My Ford had rust in the first like three months, and this truck has zero rust right off the lot. Ram has zero lot off, off the lot, so I don't know. When I'm spending $60,000, I really don't want any rust to deal with right away. If this was a $30,000 truck, sure, it'd be a completely different story, but it's not, it's 60 grand. My expectations are different. Your expectations should be different as well as the pricing goes up. I mean, my God, if they're gonna charge $60,000 for a mid-level half-ton truck, then we should demand there's no rust in the truck. Should be that simple. Should be that simple, right? Should be that. All right, so that's enough about the Toyota. So like I said, it's power, ride comfort. It is the engineering, it is no rust, and it is the overall build quality. It's a very solid truck, it's powerful. It does all the things that trucks need to do well on those uh, pieces. It probably tows well too, I haven't towed with it yet. I towed with it with, at an event with Airstream, but I need to tow with it by myself. And uh, I'm sure it tows well, it tow hauls well, that kind of stuff. But Ford wins in other ways. I know, the sacrilegious of some Toyota fans. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break your heart here in a minute, but I think Ford wins in other ways. And the first thing that Ford wins is really overall features. That's one of the things that I don't understand with where Toyota went with this truck. You know, like I said, this is a very solid truck, a very powerful truck, ride comfort, all that kind of stuff. But to me, this truck is where trucks used to be and not where trucks are heading, if that makes sense. Trucks are heading to a place where there's more features, they're more usable. There's, you know, you're looking at this thing, a truck like a tool, and there's more things I can do with the tool that is the Ford truck than I can the Toyota truck, and to me it's a little bit easier to use. So I'm gonna just play with the video here in just a second. I shot this last night, because this is one of my biggest beefs. And let me precursor this a little bit. If you ever go to Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, you'll find an entire aisle full of lighting. Like, we love lighting. Like, if I'm working in my shop, I got overhead lights, I got the lamp that goes on my headlamp, light, I got flashlights, I got the, the dummy light that comes down. I mean, I got all sorts of lights in my shop. And it's and that's because I want to work and use it as a tool. So if you believe that trucks are tools, then to me they should have good lighting. And this is, let me show you on the screen. 
Okay, imagine you leave the store or you leave your friend's house. It's pitch black out here, right? Hey, you got some street lamps, but who cares about those? You're trying to get in your truck. That truck. The truck in front of us. You can't see it. There you go. There's our lights. Now, unlike Ford's with their zone lighting, I have no lighting here. Not at all. I can go around the front. You see the truck like you could in like, you know, 2016, 2015. I have some nice... If I press my button again, nice bed lamp. I can see in the bed pretty nice. See back here pretty decent, but again, nada. So you fumble, you hit your hit the truck, you smack your leg into your running boards, then you get in. You have the one light here. You can kind of see stuff now after you found the door, right? I got nothing. I got something. And then, so dark, and the cabin is, nah, not great. If you drop your keys or you step in the mud puddle, well, that's on you, folks, because that's not a amount of lighting there. That's the one thing I do miss, the Ford versus the Tundra, is I just, where's the truck? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Why can't I have any lights? Why can't I have more lights? Why can't I have a cabin that's lit up? I can see some stuff. I can get in the truck. Nothing. No puddle lamps. Nada. The only thing I do miss with my Ford. All right, number two thing that, well, I wish this truck had, and I've harped on this before, and I'm gonna continue harp on this, is that I wish I had more power in the truck, right? So. I have a 400 watt hookup in the back, which I find is really interesting because, did you know this? And Toyota's, uh, I had a Toyota salesman actually tell me this, um, one of my friends, one of my higher up salesmen told me this. He says he was surprised that there was a 400 watt plug in the back of the Tundra when the hybrid version, and that's the only way they build it now, the Toyota Sienna, Sienna, the minivan. The minivan has 1500 watts. That means the minivan can pretty much come close to powering a saw or running a, air mattress or blowing stuff up or whatever much better than the full-size truck can which i find phenomenal that there's two different options there because in the hybrid version of the tundra it's still 400 watts so i'm like wait a minute you build a hybrid sienna with 1500 watts but in the full-size truck you offer 400 watts that deserves the chin rub okay so here's the deal of power on board right i used it last year in a few different ways and it's not commercial stuff. Eh, who cares, commercial guys? Commercial guys, they get power in a job site, they get sent to them, they put power in right away, building a house, whatever. From a consumer standpoint, I thought it was pretty badass because I used it in a variety of ways. In that, I went camping, all right? So people said, well, you can go boondock me this truck because you can power off the grid. You can, it's quiet, it's simple, it's easy. You don't worry about the noisy generator. You don't worry about if the generator is gonna start. Don't worry about carrying extra fuel for your generator. You just, the truck works, it's, it's quieter. But I went camping at a campground, so we had power. I didn't need it. However, however, power went out at the campground. Yes, it. <laughs> this is such an odd thing. So it turns out while we're camping, they lost power that night, which doesn't always happen, but it happened in my case. Did I get up out of bed and plug the truck in the camper? Nah, we had, no, we had enough batteries in the camper. No big deal there. However, what we did do was kind of unique in that my wife gets up and she gets up early and she wants to make coffee for those elder gentlemen coming to the campground. They stay at the hotel, they come over for coffee. We have no power in the campground. So they were thinking, well, it's seven o'clock in the morning, you know, people go camping, sometimes they party, they sleep late, and so nobody's awake. And so she's fearful of firing a generator up and waking the whole people up, everybody up in the campground. But what she does is she takes the truck. I said, well, go take the truck. She's like, oh. I can take the truck. I didn't even occur to us. We're like, we have power on the truck. And this truck is 9,000 times quieter than, or I should say the Ford F-50 power boost is 9,000 times quieter in generator. So she gets in the truck. She drives over to the, the central meeting place that we have set up in the campground. She drops tailgate, plugs in the coffee pot, and boom. We got coffee for the old men because they get cranky without coffee. And didn't wake up anybody. She put the breakfast out there in the tailgate. People came over, got coffee, got breakfast, went to work. We didn't care about extension cords or where to put the pot or this and the other and having no power. It was just simple. It was 
the thing with the power on board, it was a situation like that throughout the year. I lost power in the house for a couple hours. I was like, oh, great, we have no power. I'm thinking about getting blankets and things. Oh, wait, I got power in a truck, run an extension cord, plug in my space heater, plug in some lamps. I had to use some, uh, build a shed, and I was using some power tools in the backyard. I could run my 50-foot extension cord. I had power off the side of the house. I also have it right there in the truck. It's it, Again, it's, it's not about the need I had every day to use that feature. It's that I could. It, it expanded the usability of the tool, which is my truck. That was the most important thing for me. So I was surprised that Toyota didn't do more, especially with a hybrid. I mean, you're talking about just a bigger alternator, you're talking about a bigger inverter, some wiring, and a little bit of uh, software. Seems simple to me. Number three thing on this truck, and I've had this truck for about, like I said, a month now, and it's one of the hard things to have with this truck is the overall styling. I don't have a problem with engineering. Again, I talked about engineering being solid, I talked about powertrain being solid, all kinds of stuff being solid. I have a problem with the, with the styling. First, it's kind of ugly. You know, I just can't get beyond that front end. I need, I'm gonna order some vinyl wrap to get rid of the chrome, which I normally don't do with a truck, right? I'm gonna keep it for nine months, 10 months and sell it. Why would I modify it? But in this case, I just don't like it. And then in the rear, I've talked about this many times in the rear, tailgate goes down, you can't get in the back of the truck without putting your belly in the back or my belly in the back or hopping in, dropping your butt in the back like you used to with old trucks. And so I had this happen. I went to take out trash. My trash cans were in the back. I dropped the tailgate, pulled the trash cans out. I had more trash behind the trash can, so I had to put the tailgate back on, hop in the truck, drop the tailgate, or good stuff, drop the tailgate, or get out, drop the tailgate. I mean, yada, yada, yada. It was very annoying to be able to get all the trash out of the truck when I had to hop in the truck, get the stuff pulled forward, hop back out, drop tailgate, grab the stuff, put it back on, put the tailgate back on. Like, I, I don't understand where we're at in this industry where we have these Dutch doors from the Ram trucks. We have the step going down from Ford, from the, the pullout step from the Ford tailgate. We have the built-in step from Chevy and GMC. Why did Toyota's styling department think it was a good idea to make getting in the tailgate harder? That's what I don't understand. I just, it makes no sense to me. Uh, number four thing where the Ford wins over the Toyota Tundra, it's very simple. And I, and this is the thing I've heard from fans. I've heard from district trainers from Toyota, Toyota. I've heard from Toyota's engineering team itself. People are pissed about this and I'm in a state of shock over this. Number four reason why the Ford wins over the Tundra, tow hooks. Toyota doesn't have any, doesn't offer them at all. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, Tim, I never use my tow hooks. That's a pile of bull. You don't use tow hooks at all. Hell, the Tacoma's only got one tow hook and it's an off-road truck. Why do you need any tow hooks in a Tundra? You're not taking this thing off-road. Well, here's the thing. I have the TRD off-road package and I have crawl control and downhill assist control and I have the Bilstein shocks and the bigger tires and such. And I'm nervous about going off-road. I'm not nervous about the truck can handle it or not handle it. It's a long wheelbase truck, so I'm not going to do a bunch of crazy, you know, rock crawling kind of stuff. But what I mean to say is this, is whenever you go off-road, and I'm talking off-road dirt roads as well. Whenever you go off-road, it's not a question of if you'll get stuck. It's a question of when you'll get stuck. And the question is, when you get stuck, what are you going to do? And that enters my mind all the time, right? So I know that at some point, I'm gonna get this truck stuck. And then what do I do? I gotta crawl underneath the truck somehow and hook a tow strap to it and pull it free because I have no way else to do it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, from experience from other vehicles and throughout the years, I'm probably gonna damage the bumper or damage something by doing that because that tow strap is gonna be at a weird angle. It's gonna rub the bumper weird or something like this. And it just creates more problems. And so from my standpoint, it makes me nervous to go off road in that I don't know how I'm gonna get out easily because I don't have the opportunity to do this. Now, you may be thinking, well, did you use the tow straps or the tow hooks in your Ford? I'm like, I did. So while I was, I have a farm that way, a friend of mine lets me use, and there's a really big hill that goes over top of it to a flat landing area for a, like a dirt road. And I like to take trucks over the hill because, well, hey, it's fun to just nail it at the bottom of the hill and fly over the top and come on, it's a lot of fun. 
But I was coming back from a trip and I had a Ford Bronco Sport and I decided to take the Ford Bronco Sport over the hill. Naturalized with some people the first time, they want to see what the Bronco Sport was, I'm showing it off. You get the gist, right? Hold my beer moment. Anyways, I get up the hill and I bury it down to the axles. What I didn't know is that while I was gone on this trip, they had a bunch of rain come through. And while the dirt on top felt pretty solid, because I had scouted the area and I had driven around, while the dirt on top felt pretty solid, down lower, it was still kind of moist. And so, sank it down. Well, the Ford Bronco Sport had tow hooks in the front. I called my wife and she brought out the Ford and so we hooked tow hook to tow hook. Now, we tried digging ourselves out. We tried using two by fours. We tried doing everything we could to get free, but it was high centered and buried to the axles. You had to pull it free. And so we pulled it out. I had no damage to my truck and no damage to the Ford Bronco Sport. Didn't crawl into the mud because the dirt. Because here's the deal. With that high centered with those axles buried, I couldn't get underneath the truck to get to a, a recovery point. It wasn't possible. <laughs> I, you know, unless I took a shovel and dug and dug and dug myself free, I had a hell of a time finding some place to go out. So that's my thing with tow hooks. Is is I get it's an appearance thing for some people. I get people that don't use it. I understand all that kind of stuff. For me, it just makes me more cautious about going off road because I don't have the opportunity to get out of trouble more easily than I would other other trucks. So like for example, I'm gonna get a GMC, I'm gonna get a Ford, I'm gonna get a, a Ram in a couple weeks, three different trucks, different weeks stacked up. They will all have tow hooks. But my thing is what happens if I get that one truck stuck, I can't bring my truck out to get it free unless I crawl underneath my truck and it just, I just don't like it, okay? Uh, number five thing where the Ford wins over the, the Toyota Tundra, and I really can't believe I'm saying this, but the fifth way that Ford wins is with their SYNC 4 system, their infotainment system. As you know, I've done some videos on this. I have a whole lot of problems with the Toyota's new infotainment system from having driver profiles to having the pin. Overall layout, I just I just don't like it. And I know Toyota's working on to make some changes based on our my feedback and other people's feedback. And they're making some changes. And they're going to keep improving the system, but I, I just still don't like it. I, I just... Just the layout, just I think the Ford does a better job. And the Ford's got buttons along the top, which I understand there's no buttons on the screen. It's all touch touch buttons, there's buttons along the side, but there's no hard buttons. And I know that that's the future. Everybody wants these fancy big screens with no hard buttons and such, but I like hard buttons. I like the fact that when I pulled into a parking spot, I could hit the camera button right along the top and it would turn on the camera. I can do it down below. I have a hard button down there. But nothing around the screen. I have to look up, look down, and I just, I'd like a home button. I know there is no home with this system. I know there's no such thing as home, but you know, I'm such a, used to phones and, and homes and icons and apps and stuff, and I just feel like this system missed the mark. I just think that there's a lot of opportunity there to improve it, and I think Ford system is better. And again, I, I like Ford's graphics better. I like their the speed of loading better. I think everything about the Ford system is overall better. And I know that's not a real truck thing. And I understand people won't, will say, you know, that's not a real truck guy thing. What the hell are you talking about? You should talk about just towing or and just horsepower and performance because that's the way trucks should be. Well, you know what? Trucks have changed. And the things that we like and dislike about trucks now are way different than they used to be five years ago, way different than they used to be 10 years ago. And these kind of things really do make an ownership, uh, make a difference, excuse me, over the full ownership of the vehicle. That's what I want to say. So there you go. There's my thoughts. I've been asked a few times about this. I want to put on one video for you guys on the five good things, five things that make, five things Toyota wins, five things the Ford wins. I kind of give you my overall thoughts if you're out there shopping for different trucks. Uh, make sure you consider the video over here. Website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.